King of Babylon news break guys King of Babylon update 9.8 is about to be upon us and it is insane with things like 4,800% stat increases, dragons galore, more events and just so many more daily tasks to give you well more free stuff. Let's go check it out. Hey guys, Pokey Mountain here from twitch.tv slash Mountain, bringing you all the latest news and events of all things King of Avalon and of Pokemon. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the latest King of Avalon update to version 9.8, which is going to be upon us very, very shortly. We're going to discuss the new events that are in there, the new items, as well as what other little nitty bitty pieces we have managed to find so far. There have been several players who managed to get their hands on the beta test of this update and I've collected the footage from all over the internet and brought it into one place so that you yourself and I can be prepared and know what it is that is coming to our game. Before we get started though, if you are into King of Babylon and you do like Pokemon, please consider hitting the like button, subscribe and the bell notification icon so that you don't miss out on any future upcoming events or any news or tips or anything like that. Right, let's get started into it, guys. The first thing to take note of is the fact that Merlin Trials no longer exists. It has been replaced by Night of the Lake. Now, Night of the Lake has actually been split up into four separate parts, and we're going to go into the video now and have a look at that quickly. Let's see. So here we got Night of the Lake, and at the moment I've got a video, one of the videos that I have collected, um, and we're going to start off with the first part, which is Path of Legend. Now, as I say, it is, this is replacing the entire Merlin Trials, so be prepared for a lot of information. Path of Legend is pretty much the closest thing you get to what the old Merlin Trials were, where you battle against other uh, monsters and that sort of thing. But as you can see, there are three parts to it, Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Journey for Revenge, Journey for Excalibur, and Training Camp. Within these three different parts there's actually quite a lot that you can do this for example shows you the battling format which is very similar to when you first started off your king of avalon game and you had to open up each little piece of your castle you battled against the dark legions kind of similar to the burn trials where you battled against the other castles and legions and you get yourself rewards the big thing to take note of here is that you get something now called Traveler's Insignia as well as Reputation. The Traveler's Insignia is going to be something that is similar to the Spire where you grow and generate resources that you can use in the shop to purchase items with. And Reputation is how you're going to progress through these different levels. The higher your reputation, the more things you can purchase in the shop, the more rewards you can get, and the better rewards you can get through each of these different uh, sections. Here you can see some of the rewards, uh, some speed ups and that sort of thing. But after each section, you're going to receive a destiny card or an option of destiny cards that you've got to pick from as you progress through. In this particular case, we'll take the middle one, which is Fairies, Fairies Blessings Enchantment, giving buffs to troop attack, defense, and health of 8.7%. Now that actually just gets added to it, and as you can see, the next part of the path is open. We'll challenge it, and we'll march off, and we'll do a battle exactly like normal against the Dark Legions, once again, at the end of which we will receive our rewards, and our reputation increases. But in this particular case, the insignia does not increase. It looks like it's only for the sub-bosses and the main bosses at the end of each event or at the end of each part that gives you those increases. But either which way, you're still going to be progressing and going further. Now here you can actually see where the reputation level comes into it or where it starts to come into it. These are just some of the rewards that you can get according to your reputation level from within the side. Here, everything at the moment, now this might change constantly the rewards will probably change uh, like anything else does and one month it'll be one thing and the next month something else but at the moment as you can see this is all dragon based so we get dragon skill xp we get dragon xp as well as dragon orbs and the higher your reputation the higher the level of your reward that you can collect at the end of the day 
it actually goes quite high as you can see and uh, there's 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 a lot there's a heck of a lot that you can actually gain from this here's the shop to give you an example of what you can see at the moment nothing else is really opened i don't know if they're going to add more like with the old merlin trials the further you went into it the the more items opened up that you could purchase but just straight off the bat starting off once again like with the rewards for the reputation the shop has got dragon based items from large dragon xp small dragon skill xp medium dragon skill xp large dragon skill xp emblem essence and brilliant emblem manuscripts this will probably change we don't know yet we don't have any further information of it but uh, whatever we get more whenever we get more information obviously i'll let you guys know here you can actually see the traveler's insignia at work the more insignia the, the higher you get along the through the paths the higher your rate of generation is going to be in this particular case as you can see it's plus 25 traveler's insignia per 10 minutes that's also something that you're going to want to build up like with the spire because you're going to be utilizing that in the shop to purchase those dragon xp boosts and the dragon skill boosts right so that is it for the first part which is path of legend the second part to the new update is the witch's cauldron now the witch's cauldron we're going to go into that quickly for you guys we're trying to keep this as simple and as concise as we can obviously but as I say, there is quite a bit to go through. The Witch's Cauldron is another time-based collection in-game sort of service. Um, the rewards that you get from the Witch's Cauldron, however, we're not exactly sure where that comes into play. Whether it's going to go on to your Dragon Spirit or, or where exactly. But you'll see the rewards shortly when we pop it up now. Um, here you can see, as you come into it, it tells you the following materials were produced while you were away. So as I say, this is a time-based uh, collection sort of service similar to the spire where over x amount of time you generate x items the way it's a little bit different though is that you're going to somewhat gamble these items away you've got three different items that you can collect and these items according to how you put them in on the right hand side of your screen there you have a percentile or percentile chance of getting one of the four items that you see in the middle well behind this Oathkeeper chest uh, in a second. The Oathkeeper chest is obviously the reward that you really want the most. And you can see here, for example, the ring, the amulet, longbow, helm, boots, and kure, or caress, or however you pronounce that. These, to me, look like items that's going to be for your dragon spirit. But unfortunately, we won't know until the actual update comes out. But let's have a look there. So there behind, you can actually see the four different items that you can obtain. And according to how you adjust it here, as you can see, I'm adjusting it now, and you can see for yourself the percentage increases or the odds of each item that you might get. Now, if we click on the throw button, it's actually going to go for the gamble, and it's going to see what can we can, what can we get for our gamble. In this case, one, five, and two items, or that's four items, or four, five, and two. And let's throw it in and see what do we get. We got steel. Okay, so we managed to get steel this time. Let's do it again and see what we get. Uh, this time we actually got one of the Oathkeeper items, which is fantastic. So that's effectively Witch Cauldron uh, in, in a nutshell. You get different levels of your treasures and your rewards. And the, the amount that you can earn or the better the items you can earn once again goes according to reputation. As you can see, basic treasure, we've just got the basic treasure, which is sorted. The next one is fine treasure, but that unlocks at reputation level 9. Slightly higher items, I'm assuming, and obviously we'll find out as time goes by and we manage to progress further with the actual update uh, once it comes out, or if we can progress further with the betas of the update. Now, if we go backwards, we go back into the magic chamber here, we can actually see our items being created. The crow's tail, the giant beard, giant's beard, and the innocent's tears. These three items are all being produced. The crow's tail, one per one hour, 20 minutes. The giant's beard, one per 40 minutes. And the innocent's tears, one per two hours. Obviously, the innocent's tears is going to be the item that's worth more, and more of those will give you a better chance of getting the rarer item when you throw in your lot and you go ahead with your gamble. So, once again, another time-based collection thing that just runs in the background, and it's free for you to just come in and give it a try. 
You never know if you're going to be lucky or not. Only one way to find out, I guess. That's pretty much it for the Witch's Cauldron. Uh, as I said, it's just added things that's going to be given to you for free. The next one that we're going to be going through is the Forest Hunt. Now, the Forest Hunt uh, gives you it gives you gems, the lower class gems starting off. And I assume that as you go higher into your different levels, the gems themselves will improve. But you're starting off here with the, if I'm not mistaken, it's the Valor Gems, uh, which is, is, is what, a 20% increase, I think it is. But if you don't have any gems, or if you're new to the game, that 20% increase is still a good increase, considering it's a free item. Now, the way that this works is you take a clue, according to the game, and it tells you what you need to do. In this particular case, in the red bar, you can see upgrade buildings one times. So if you go upgrade a building, you will have succeed, successfully completed this task. Let's go and have a look now and see what we're going to get. This is the low chance of the Valor Gemstone and the Crystals. Okay, fantastic. Let's go and upgrade a building quickly and see uh, what actually happens with our, with our clue task sort of thing. Okay, so here we go. We're going to just quickly go and upgrade the building... Uh, let's do the storehouse upgrade there speed it up okay there we go let's quickly go and have a look and see what our rewards or how our rewards look and you'll see that you can actually progress further along by not claiming your rewards so let's click here in the bottom satchel and claim our rewards quickly uh, do, do, do. what did we get boom we got our rewards which we knew was the crystals and the gem now, if you keep searching, you could get better rewards along the way. So we're going to click confirm and we're going to try again. And the next one is conduct personal research one time. That's personal research, not alliance. So let's go to university. We'll just do a quick, simple research over here. Let's get some more food quickly. Okay, then we're going to go in. Uh, uh, we didn't. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay, so we're going to click the satchel. And as you can see, Boom, we've managed to get our rewards. Now, if we keep going and we keep going and we keep going, each time we keep going, it's going to be a new challenge and it's going to be better and better rewards. There's also a time limit. Um, I don't know if you saw it on this one, but there was a four hour time limit. When we go back into it now, I'll show you quickly. You've got a limited time where you actually have to complete that task. So there we go. We have done the next upgrade building. Next task is complete. Okay, you can't see the update now, but it does have a time limit. So there we go, we've completed this update, and boom, we have received ourselves another reward. And once again, we can keep going. We can either stop searching, taking what we've gathered, or we can go and do it again. Here we go, kill a level 8 monster. So we're going to quickly just go kill a level, this is called troops back, or troops, we've only got two marches and they're both out. And then where's a level 8? There's a level 8. We're going to quickly kill that level 8, and uh, we'll speed it up. There's a 10 here. Yeah, I think. Okay, we'll go for the 9. Kill the level 9, speed up the march quickly, and see what our rewards are. Here we go. Let's get there as quickly as we can. And boom. All right, let's go have a quick look. Now we can go back to the forest hunt and we can claim our rewards. Boom. Simple as that. Congratulations. Now we've got the, uh, the, the highest level of reward available at this tier and uh, the receiving the next clue after 12 or 11 and a half hours so effectively it looks like you might get to do this twice a day sort of thing but once again it is twice a day for free items for free crystals and for free gems what an absolute pleasure and the last thing we're going to go over with the new merlin's lake is the kingdom bounty now, the Kingdom Bounty itself is what, again, we're not sure where these items fit in. It might be like new hero weapon sort of thing, um, but they give you some sort of weapon and it gives you tiers of ascension, gives you experience and things like that, all hero based. So Journey for the Holy Grail, Burning Barnyard, Bandits in the Wood, these are all going to give you items that are for heroes. So that's why we assume that it's probably going to be hero weapons of some sort. It does match the existing weapons that we have at the moment in terms of halberds, scabbards, and things like that. As you can see, you can get Tears of Ascension and Resurrection Scrolls and that sort of thing. So to do this, all you've got to do is select the task that you want. 
a point uh, two heroes that's going to go on the actual journey uh, okay wait this, as you can see here it requires two level 20 heroes we only have one currently so let's quickly go and make a second hero level 20 bring that down to 20 quickly and let's go back to kingdom bounty right let's try that again so now we can select our two level 20 heroes and we can say go and we can allow them to go on their actual mission um another time based thing so effectively you put it into play and you leave you just leave it alone this one bandits in the wood is a 30 minute time limit let's uh, we'll just go back quickly and show you there you'll see at the top it tells you what the limit is bounty time 30 minutes and at the bottom it shows you your progression You'll also see that each of these, uh, or not necessarily each of these, but each one of these has the potential to be different. The middle one, for example, for example, journey for holy journey for holy grail, is slightly different. The first, the other two give you the four squares, which the assumption is that any hero of level twenty can go on that adventure. Whereas the one in the middle specifically has the marks for master of war and keeper of the seal. So. Most likely you will require somebody with the Master of War ability to be level 20 to slot in there and the level 20 Keeper of the Seal to slot into Journey for Holy Grail. And that is a three hour march. Now if those troops are in this adventure, they most likely won't be available for you to go and do other events with them. So for example, farming or for hunting the golem or whatever the, ca the, the case might be. So just bear in mind what you do put in there, you probably won't be able to utilize for pretty much anything else. Um, that's it for the new or the replacement to Merlin Trials, guys. And let's carry on with what else is new to the game. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is that as of this new update, the NS2 Heroes and Netherfall Season 2 Heroes will be available from the Alliance Store. Up until now, it's been the Netherfall Season 1 Heroes, and now you can get yourself the Netherfall Season 2. They are stronger than the Season 1. They've got some really good abilities. They are truly fantastic for bowmen and things like the Golem and that sort of thing, and just generally in, in certain marches and that sort of thing. Uh, it's one available per day at Alliance Level 9, so if you don't have Alliance Level 9, you're going to really want to get yourself up there. Um, but yeah, effectively, the NS2 heroes are now free or will be free to Alliance Level 9 members. The Level 1, the NS1 heroes, are already available in the normal Horn summoning. Uh, so you're going to be able to get your hands on NS1 and NS2 heroes relatively easily. Let's have a look here. If you click on the eye, you can see there uh, Golo and or Gole and Lancelot are both available on the advanced summon already. So you can get your NS1 heroes from your advanced summoning and you can be able to get your NS2 heroes from the Alliance store. Right, the next thing is the new event that it's actually launching now. I said before that there are many dragons. Well, here the dragons come. This new event is called Guardians Challenge, and it's based upon your Dominion level. You can see it here in the top corner. If we click on that, you can see there are different levels, similar to the Portal Monster. There's 10 different levels in this particular case, each one requiring a higher Alliance Dominion. Now... You might be asking, what is an Alliance Dominion? Well, if you go to your Alliance and you click on Territory, you'll see there in the top, it says Dominion Level. This is Dominion Level 1 because it's a beta test farm account sort of thing. But effectively, the higher your Alliance is, the better the dragon you can go against. And you can see by the rewards here that as you progress, the rewards, the rewards do get better uh, along the path. The challenge also is a lot more challenging along the path until you get yourself all the way down to the level 10 dragon. So I'll show you here the rewards for the level 10 dragon. And there you go. Right. So let's click on the dragon and see what happens. So once you click on it, you've got three different choices. Honor challenge, chivalry challenge, or loyalty challenge. Each one is a different type of fighting experience. Less health, more shields, medium health, medium shields, high health, fewer shields. Uh, it, effectively, it means that you've got different types of battles. Once you go into it, you can select still the honor, the chivalry, or the loyal. And you can actually see the on the right-hand side 
the breakdown. It shows you Elder Dragon, Guardian Health, 107 or 1.72 million. The Guardian has eight shield layers. Shields can reduce the damage he receives, receives by 99% when there are at least five teams rallying the Guardian and he is dealt at least 1,700 damage after the shield reduction of that 99%. One shield layer will be lost. So what does that mean? In this particular case with this dragon's got eight shields. That means you're going to have to do eight rallies against this dragon. Each rally having a minimum of five players participating. So you're going to have to do this in, a, in an alliance that is actually active. You're going to need an, an active alliance to do this guardians challenge. It's going to take a lot of battle, a lot of time to get through all eight shields and then to actually defeat the dragon. But it does promise to be quite a bit of fun. Um, obviously, if you're going with the one with the higher shields, it will have more shields with lower health. And if you're going with the other one, it's going to have higher health and lower shields. The highest I've seen so far was 14 shields, for example. Which means you're going to have to rally that dragon 14 times with five players to defeat the shield. So it's it, it's catered to fit into the different alliances. If you don't have an alliance that has, for example, 14 active players, you might only have, for example, six active players or 10, or let's just say eight active players. You can take the shields that are lower so that your active players can actually battle against it and succeed. So that is the Guardian's challenge. Um, let me just show you the next video. The next video, I'm going to just skip ahead so you can see what the dragon itself looks like. Because in that last video, we didn't have, uh, we weren't part of an alliance. And you have to be part of an alliance for at least 24 hours before you can summon a dragon. But there you go. That's what it looks like. This is the easy elder dragon. It's 31 minutes time. You've got to do all those rallies in 31 minutes. It actually looks very, very pretty. Don't you think the dragon with the shields floating around it and that sort of thing. Once again, just to battle the dragon, similar to the portal monster, similar to the stone sentinel, defeat the dragon, get the rewards at the end of the day. Uh, going through this, you can actually see, let me just show you while I'm here also, the there's no new artifacts, nothing has come up, still R5 is the highest level of artifacts that there is. So it doesn't look like any new artifacts are being added to this update. But the hero weapons look has changed, or the page for the hero's weapons look. Um, the dragon emblems, there's new emblems, I can't show you here right now, so let me just skip ahead here quickly. Uh, as you can see, here is the new, here, the new emblems, it's called Lion Heart Emblems. And just now I'll go into the emblems themselves and actually show you what these new emblems can do. It is, it is insane, absolutely insane. But let me just quickly show you what the new weapons page looks like. They've gone and made it similar to the equipment page as it stands now. Um, let me just skip to it quickly for you. Here we go. So there we go. This is what the new weapons looks like. You can see on the left-hand side, Raven, Torrent, Wildfire, Tempest. And then you actually got each of your items. It shows you the item in the middle. Same as your equipment. And on the right-hand side, it shows you your benefits your bonuses as well as what is required to forge the item if you do not already have it uh, you can go to the weapon library and you can see all the different weapons that are available as per normal right before we get to the dragon emblems i want to go on to the next one quickly for you and show you that the barbarian camps or the ravager camps are back which means Aurelis Pendragon is back. Now, I apologize for the quality of this video. This, uh, the, the person who uploaded this video, it's a very dark video. I hope you guys can see it. Um, but yeah, we'll, let's just see if we can get through. So as you can see, the Ravager camps are back, which means you're going to do the Ravager hunt. You're going to defeat the Ravager camps. You're going to summon the, what was it? The Ravager monster. I can't remember what it's called offhand right now. Uh, and you can get yourself the Aurelis Pendragon Fragments. With the Ravager Camp, the rewards you can get is going to be your resources, like normal. You're going to get speed ups. You can get fragments, depending on the different level. You'll, uh, your fragments will vary. As well as a sort of hero's chest. And that hero's chest will give you the chance to get other fragments or horns that you can use in your advanced summoning. 
So as you can see here, the development resources bundle gives you things like low chances of 1.5 million food or wood, 300k iron, 75k silver, so the nice big stuff, all the way down to the high chances of getting the 15k foods, 15k woods, 2k irons and 500 silver. So pretty standard sort of thing, but you can also, if you notice, there's a very low chance of getting Aurelis Pendragon Fragment times one. So there's one way to get yourself the fragment. If we go into the hero's chest next, I can show you there. Okay, so here you can see you got the other fragments. You can get Oberon, Sir Gawain, uh, Igraine, as well as skills, scrolls, horns, XP, that sort of thing. Um, I noticed that Sir Gawain is now on an orange background like Oberon and Igraine. So I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I don't know if they're changing his uh, rarity or not. But uh, yeah, that's something we're going to have to just wait for the actual uh, release of the 9.8 to find out for ourselves. But yes, effectively, as you can see, these are the different rewards that you can get from rallying the Ravager camps. Then if you click on Ravager Hunt at the top, you'll see, there we go, that as normal, you do the Ravager Hunts, and you can get five times a day Aurelis Pendragon Fragments. Aurelis Pendragon is absolutely fantastic for his abilities if you appoint him to reduce your resources required for research and construction and things like that. He is very, 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 very good to have. And as you can see, typical sort of rewards for Ravager Camp, like, like normal. All right, and then here we go. We're going to now go over the last thing, which is quite possibly one of the most uh, sought after reasons why you guys are here, is the new emblems. Water Drake emblem used to be the best emblem you could get. Well, not anymore. Here you can see the new basic Lionheart, precious, flawless, and rare. As you can also see by the corner, it does actually go beyond that. So I'll show you that just now. But starting off the bat, you can see here with these statistics, 685% increase. 685% increase. Now that's going to be each of the emblems. You, you got your cavalry health, bowman health, uh, infantry health. Then you got cavalry defense, bowman defense, infantry defense, and so on and so on. You can put these in four places, which means you are going to insanely, insanely boost your stats with each emblem each individual emblem that you manage to get your hands on. As you can see, these are for infantry attack, cavalry attack, and bowmen attack. Starting at 685, upgradable to 710, upgradable to 770, upgradable to 866. Uh, it's pretty hardcore, considering we've just got the new Raven weapons, which already have a 700% boost. So the players who are not the players who are paid to win unfortunately have got an even bigger advantage here than the free-to-play players do but what you've got to bear in mind is the fact that whenever a new item comes out like the new emblems the old number one emblem becomes a lot easier to obtain the water em the water drake emblems were a bit difficult to get you had to either purchase them or you had to do it get it through like portal monsters and things like that it was quite limited well it's going to increase now you're going to be able to get them a lot easier with the lion heart emblems coming out here you can see the other emblem the one that is for troop which applies to obviously your bowmen your cavalry and your infantry so it's always a lower value starting at 228 percent going up to 236 up to 256 up to 288 now i don't have the final level of this particular emblem to show you how high it gets but here you can see the other emblems the ones that are for for example cavalry, cavalry defense bowman defense infantry defense these ones when you bump them up all the way to legendary level are plus 1200 percent each now the fact that you can put four of these emblems on means an additional 4800 percent boost to your stats not necessarily an additional i mean you're probably sitting if you are a heavy paying player you're probably going to be sitting on your last emblem sitting on around 800 percent boost so you're going to get an extra 400 out of it but if you are a medium spend player or a low end spend player or somebody who's new to the game and is wanting to spend this is where you're going to really want to sort of spend because these emblems if you can get them are going to give you an astronomical difference to your game 1200 percent boost 
1,200% boost is just beyond ridiculous. Couple that with the new NS3 heroes, couple that with the Raven uh, weapons, and it's just, it's actually an insane jump. The OP has become beyond OP sort of thing. But once again, those who are free to play will now have easier access to the emblems and the fragments and things like that that created those weapons and that created the old emblems for themselves and they will have pretty decent stats. Just remember stats isn't everything to the game, but it is a is quite, quite a big, big important part. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it for the update. Let's get back to the newsroom. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, King of Avalon has come out with a whole lot of new things to the game, a whole lot of new information for you guys to process and to be better prepared for the update coming forward. Some old fan favorites, like the Ravager Cam coming back, which is giving you the Aurelis Pendragon fragments. It would be nice if it stuck around for a bit longer this time, because I'm pretty sure there's other players out there, like myself, who would really like to get more of those fragments. But other than that, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in, and it's, it's looking like there's going to be a lot more to do and a lot more fun within the walls of King of Avalon. So guys, comment down below. Here's a question for you guys. What do you think of this update? What do you think of the new emblems? What do you think of the fact that the NS3 heroes are now going to be available in the Alliance store? Or what do you think in general about the new update itself and the new paths that you can take instead of the Merlin's trials? Drop your comments down below and I shall uh, get back to you guys and comment or reply to your comments. Until next time, guys, be good, be well, and be safe. Love you guys. Have a good one. Hey? Bye.